Today, I think, we're actually gonna get to some proper combat, because while this is a stealth game, and where, in which we can use Translocator to sneakily navigate the Transcorp offices, it's not exclusively stealth-based, we are, are, we are gonna get some combat later, some pretty basic combat, more f befitting of a stealth game like this. We didn't- we haven't gotten to it quite yet. We're still- the first level is mainly just getting you used to using the Translocator and sneaking around robots, and now I believe today we're gonna get to use that knowledge and incorporate it into some proper combat. Okay, so this door is locked for the time being. All the places are that way, but we are going to go this way. And I'm gonna navigate through the vents up here. Attention ventilation shops ahead. This ventilation connected to acquisitions, distributions, lost and found restrooms. All the places we need to go. Except maybe that last one. I think we can save that. And uh, do we need to duck for this one? Uh, no, we're good. Some bench shafts in this game will actually require you to duck down so that you don't hit your head on things, which is really, really cool. That, that's, because that's the thing with me, like, for instance, right here, crouch to avoid pain. I, if you know anything about me, you know I'm not, I'm not really a fan of stealth games typically, and yeah, by the way, I am, like, I actually have to physically crouch down onto, onto the ground. I, I am, I'm kneeling down onto my floor so that I don't hit my head in this thing, and if I do stand up, then like glitch out of bounds. Okay, this is kind of what I was talking about last time. This is what it would what it looked like in the first game when you were about to warp into the next level. It's also already in my eyes, so I'm gonna get back down on the reality right here. And I, I love this, because stealth games are not typically my cup of tea. I just I don't know, maybe it's like I don't have the patience for them. But I'm just it's really never been my kind of game, so I don't ever really play them. I especially hate stealth sections in games that are otherwise not stealth games. That definitely don't like that. Cough, cough, Spider-Man, PS4, cough, cough, what? I didn't say anything. Actually, I did. That's, I don't think that's an unpopular take. I'm pretty sure that's pretty commonly accepted as, like, the worst parts of that game or the sections where you play as MJ. And did I hear they made them worse in Spider-Man 2? Or did they make them better? I don't know. I, I, I think there was discourse about that. Let me know in the comments if they... If they made those sections better or worse in the in in Spider-Man 2. Anyway, point is, whatever the reason may be, whether I just want the patience for that kind of game, or if it's if I find it too tedious or too laborious or whatever, these types of games where it's like stealthily navigating an environment, dodging around your enemies, and taking time to check your corners and take things super super slow and methodically, has never been my thing. Defy expectations. You know, he used to hear me talk and think I was as dumb as a barrel of hair. But look at me now. Head my own tech campfire. Reading you this motivational note in my favorite hat. So remember, we're all in the same boat. Except mine is probably bigger and more expensive. And so by that logic, you'd think that I would just hate this game because that this is exactly that it, it is a stealth game tr for, uh, through and through and yet i don't and part of it has to do with the fact that i just i love the style of this game i love i love the design of the robots i love the i love the if only today was friday maybe maybe childlike is the wrong word but like doesn't this doesn't this i guess i don't know maybe maybe just like the color palette feels nostalgic to me in a way that i can't quite put into words i i love the the I love the color of this place. I love how it looks. I love it. I love the design of everything. I love how overwhelmed you feel facing off against the robots and having just just this at your disposal. I love. I love all that. I love the story. Love, there's plenty of things about the story and all that I'll, I'll I'll try to cover as we go through the game. Aside from that, the thing that makes me really love this compared to all of the stealth games is the fact that it's in VR and like there's a very visceral sensation of being able to use and also the translocator portals are always awesome. So being able to use this to look around corners, looking through a portal, be having to physically duck down to crawl through the vents. It just, I don't know, VR always obviously makes things feel more visceral and authentic when you yourself are in, you feel like you're in the world. But especially in the case of this game, the fact that I myself have to physically duck down and like, uh, sidestep behind a wall and peek around the corner with my head to see if anybody's coming to murder me. It makes me feel a lot more engaged than I do in a, nor in a standard stealth game. It's the point of this little rant that I'm going on. So yeah, I love it. I love me some budget cuts. And I'll, I'll try to keep talking about kind of why I love this game so much and what about it appeals to me and some of the specifics as we go 
throughout the game. Did you know every day is Taco Day? Thanks, Lord Business. Adventure is calling. Oh wait, why well, need to check the five, seven, eleven? Boopity boop boop. Nope. Boop boop boop. Hello. Hey, I'm not sure if this line is tapped, so there's a package of uh letter openers waiting for you in the distributions department. They're shiny, sharp, and stabby letter openers that will definitely help you to escape. Let's just say that a manifest that said safe, totally harmless letter openers, and another manifest that said sharp pointy knives magically got switched around. <laughs> Go, quickly! I also love that sense of connection you feel with with Winter. You 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 two being the last humans left alive, as far as you know, for the time being. And just the feeling of it's being you two against against the universe, having to face off against you, I mean, you obviously you're the one who has to actually go and do all this stuff, but she's in your ear the whole time providing you intel in a sort of Master Chief Cortana kind of situation. Or you she is she is your eye in the sky, she's your Guy in the chair, as it were, if you want to quote Spider Man Homecoming, trying to work together to escape Transcorp and, and save humanity and all that, st all, that, all, that, all that good stuff. Alright, I don't really need the magnifying glass for this, but I'll use it anyway. My dearest Alan, do you know this morning I was on a train that went through a city that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you? I bought a ticket from a man who would likely be dead if it wasn't for you. I read up on my new work a whole field of scientific inquiry that only exists because of you. The inspiration I bring with me to my new posting here in America is one founded in your work. I cannot wait to begin on this new puzzle of computing. I just know it will revolutionize the world. I wish you could be here with me, but you always were a stubborn man. Sometimes it is the people no one imagines anything of who do the things no one can imagine. Isn't that so? Yours in mind and in heart, Joan. I like this, being able to... Because again, like, like I said, at this point you are the only... Aside from Winter, you're the only human left in this place. It's you against the universe, and everything else, everyone else been, has been reported to HR, quote-unquote, as it were, replaced by robots. So it's a very eerie feeling to be able to go around to all these different offices and check all the, check all the desks, read all the files, and just look into all their lives and feel a sense of, like, what once was. If that makes sense. Reading all the endearing letters of and looking into the lives of all the people who've just been t taken away by the robots, it's cool. Uh, I like getting little little bits of of the world through all these little messages. And I'll try to find. I'll try to read as many as I can find. Dear Nikki, I hope that your travels have brought you new perspective, as you being your new appointment at the transportation trading company. The reason for this letter is quite selfish, I must admit. For I have recently discovered a most fascinating new shrub with a flower which I would like to dedicate to you. I discovered it during my visit to the Three Natural Kingdoms. What an admirable country Madagascar is. It would merit, uh, it would merit not a casual observer, but entire acad- aca It would merit not a casual observer, but entire academics. Madagascar, I may announce to naturalists, is their promised land. It is there that nature seems to have retreated as into a private sanctuary. To work on different models from any she has used elsewhere. Bear, of course, traveled with me, and I would be completely lost without her support and assistance. She sends the warmest of wishes on your new adventures as well. Please accept this token of appreciation and love. Always your friends, Philbert, or Philbert and Bear. A name which I'm definitely not pronouncing correctly, unfortunately. Happiness can, find, can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Because what's the first thing you do when you wake up from a bad dream? You turn on the light. Hi, friend. Amber. Can you keep it down? Some of us are trying to look busy. Some of us are trying to do human work here. You're eating an apple and reading the Bible. Whatever the fuck this is. The... Hello, fellow human. Fellow human, uh-huh. We cannot change the system through humanizing, we can only change the system through smiling. If you say so, oh, okay, yep, there's our CS Suspicious co-worker, tag and report to HR. So that is what I was talking about in the last episode. If you can, you can tag a robot like that, and then be able to see exactly where they are through walls. I never had to use this in any of my playthroughs of this game, but it most certainly is a useful feature. And who knows, maybe I'll try to use it a little more.
Because I, I, I am out of practice with this, because obviously I haven't played it in quite a while. So I might end up needing to resort to that at some point. But for now, I think we're okay. And we're going to need to go duck down again to... Actually, I think... No, okay, we do have to... We, we have to duck down a little... I, I have to, like, hunch over. I don't have to fully crouch. I do have to hunch over up here. So that I don't hit my head on the ceiling. This message is to remind you that your work here at Transcore is irreplaceable. Well, for the next five years. Once we figured out how to create an autopilot mail card, you're all fired. <laughs> but until then, remember, you matter. You are loved. You have value. I think I'm safe in here. Yeah, I, th I think we're safe in here. I think we're clear. No robots lurking around these corners waiting for me. And the door's shut, so I don't think they can see me. Oh, here's the approved thing. I was looking for this. I, it's, it's, you know, this could have been helpful for the guy that was trying to visit his terminally ill grandmother. Shit! Alright, I guess... Shit! Holy f... Alright, uh... How, how do we get in here? Oh, move! Uh... Got him, gotta go! There's a hole, a hole in the ceiling up there. Go, 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 go! Come on! Get me up here! Land! Pull it! What the fuck? Where am I? Okay, I guess I'm here. This isn't where I wanted to- The fuck? How did I get here? I- You know what? I don't know. We're not gonna question it. <gasps> Holy shit. Oh, I got careless. I, I was- I was sitting in front of the window. I didn't realize- I didn't realize he was there. Oh my god, okay. Holy hell. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love- I love the rush you feel when your heart starts pounding in a million miles an hour away, because that's just one robot, it's just one of them. And we're gonna have later, but towards the end of this series, we're gonna have entire rooms full of these damn things trying to kill me. And here, here we, we just got one of these of these little robots for the time being, and already it's sending me into a tizzy. Huh, because we don't have the damn letter openers yet. Obviously, Winter was telling us about the letter openers and that, if you didn't realize, those are going to be our weapons that we're going to have to be able to use against these robots a little bit later. Uh, but we don't have them yet. Okay. How did I even get here? I was just trying to get back up into the rafters up here. Oh, I guess... Huh. So in my, my mad dash, because I, I was trying to shoot through one of the holes in the ceiling to just land up in the, in the, in the rafter area, I guess I, I, I arced my shot so masterfully that I somehow landed through another hole and got into the vents. Which is good, because I was way safer there than I than I could could have been anywhere else. Also, yeah, like right there, there is, there is definite poppin'. Because I, I've, poppin' is something that I don't usually hold it like too harshly against the game's overall quality, but I still notice it because it's kind of impossible not to and it does somewhat frustrate me whenever I see it because it can mess with my immersion and I definitely would have noticed it if it had been this prevalent in the original games which it definitely was not okay so let's try to go back into that room see if there's anything interesting up here we can find when I'm not being okay let me let me hide right here I, I want to shut this door so I get a little bit of privacy. Oh, sh shit! I didn't realize he was in here. Okay, where is he? Shut the door. Okay, I think we're safe now. I didn't realize there were two doors into this place. Huh, this is what happens when you, when you, you don't play the game in a few years. Yeah, you start to forget some things. Uh, I can't, I can't out, I, I can't out get the building. Please, I need to go home and sleep. I don't even know how long I've been here. Yikes. Real stand-up company we got ourselves. Oh! Turns out they, I forgot they can open doors. I actually forgot they can open goddamn doors. All right, um, let's just eat on out. Let's do that. Oh, I actually forgot they can open doors. <sighs> okay, this is good. I gotta be honest. I, I was kind of worried this LP might be too short because I was just I was just gonna blitz through it because I I've played the game so many times. 
Then I remembered, oh wait, it's been years. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the specifics have been have been kind of lost to me. So yeah, we are we're not uh, we're not sitting as pretty as I thought we would be. This is gonna be a a process. And this is still level two. We're still in the early days. We have so much left to go and there's only still only one okay how do we get i think i think we have to go to that other room that we were in before uh like this way and then there's a there's a hole up in the ceiling of course you're gonna go in there you, you're just gonna be a dick about it okay go around that corner we got a little bit of time please take me where i want to go yep i think we're safe i think this should take me into the room with the letter openers and we're home free. We are home free, baby. It's another glorious day in the distribution department. Hurricanes call our mantras to push the envelope of technological possibility. I suppose that's why you work in the mailroom. <laughs> See, it's funny because envelopes. Hey, friends. Wouldn't it be highly unfortunate if I just poured a giant cup of coffee on all your computers and shut this place down? I'm sure, I'm sure you'd love, you'd love it if I did that. This door I don't think opens, it does not open. But there is a phone right here, does this, or does this fax machine work? Let's find out. I think, it sounds like it does. One, five, nine, eight. Hi, so the good folk of distributions have already distributed the knives, <clears throat> I mean, the letter openers, to all the office supply rooms. Grab some on your way through to the cybernetics department. I know, it seems a bit ominous, but it's the quickest path to the exit. Good luck. In other words, the you can find... Hey, buddy! Wanna come with me? I think this is supposed to sound an alarm, but uh, the, the robots can't get me here. I believe these doors are sealed up nice and tight, because they can open... They can't open these doors. The, these doors are locked up nice and tight. But the ones that I- if I can open a door, they can open a door, is basically the conclusion. If I can swing open a door, so can they. I forgot they could do that, which really caught me off guard. That was... a lot- several more panic attacks than I would have liked to have tonight, but... Oh well. You gotta live dangerously sometimes. Alright, here... Here are those letter openers, and this is what I mean when I say you need to conserve your inventory slots. You really... <laughs> you need to have as many of these on you as you can find, and also you need to be very careful with how many of them you use. You gotta be super, super conservative with them. Because you don't get- you don't get an unlimited supply. You do not have an unlimited supply of knives. And there's usually gonna be more robots in the level than knives. So, and that, that's assuming you hit all your targets. Of course, they start you out pretty easy, obviously. They give you a whole crap ton right here. I think I'm gonna leave you behind. Give you crops and knives to start out with, but they're not gonna be that generous forever, trust me. Once once we get out into the once once we leave the safe area of distributions and go back out into the into the main parts of the level, we are going to it's going to immediately stop being that generous to us. Ooh, scissors. Do I want scissors? Probably I'll I'll, I'll drop out one of them for scissors. Just I think it's gonna be easier to hit targets with the scissors than it would be if I was trying to hit them with the with the knives. And don't worry, the knife throwing will not be the only means we have of dealing damage to enemies. It's just all we got for the time being, you know. Baby steps, gonna work your way up to the to the bigger stuff. And hey, we're back here in the cold open land. We're back here at the beginning of the game, which is and I think now now is when it's gonna start to feel a little more more closely like the demo that I played originally without the switcheroo that they had in the cold open for the sake of, you know, mixing things up and catching the player off guard. I think it was something else you had to do over here in the demo, but we don't need to do that here. We can just go right on through the anti-spy vent and through the elevator. Just around the corner. I don't know how much y'all look forward to seeing him, but just a friendly reminder, he's busier than a funeral home fan in July, so don't miss your appointment. Oh, how I wish I could. Hopefully we never have to meet with Adam. But of course the game is definitely reminding you, continually reminding you of his existence for a reason. Okay, 
So now, uh, now we have to make our first major choice. To kill or not to kill, that is the question. Is there a way to get around this stealthily? I can't... I feel like... I feel like if I aim well enough, I can probably stealthily get around you. Without you ever being the wiser. Yeah, we're good. I, I could have if I wanted to, I could have... I could have knifed that guy and it would have been a really easy hit because obviously he, was, he wasn't looking at me so I could have just flung him right in the back. But again, it's all about conserving your ammo capacity. You gotta make sure... And of course they do give you two knives right here, but I could end up coming back for those later after I use more knives. And there's a lot of robots in this next section. Attention. Rogue human alert. Human employee number 451 missing from designated workstation. Military response advised. Report any lifelike behavior to HR. Lockdown in effect. So this is what I mean. I, I'm physically standing in front of this wall and physically leaning out to check to see. Oh my god! And then doing that to avoid being detected. That is a huge part of why I love this game as much as I do compared to a lot of other types of stealth games. Okay, so now we gotta we gotta be smart about this. I think we should have a good. I don't I don't want to use the big one just yet. I want to use one of the smaller ones. So let's look at his path. He's gonna walk in front of the door, I think. He's, he's coming around. He's coming around right now. Let's get ready. Wait for him to walk, and then... Huh! I missed! Shit! Shit! Gotcha! Okay. That's fine. It's fine. I panicked a little bit. I panicked a little bit. But we're good. Alright, let me get that knife back. You, I don't think I can retrieve... Yeah, I mean, I can retrieve the knife after you throw it, but it's kind of useless, so... No point in holding into that. Now, the other thing that I know you have to do in this is that you need to hide the bodies so that they don't find out what you've done. So, uh, come over here. Come over here, pal. You are coming with me. Now, it's, I don't think it's super necessary for this part because there's no actual... There's no other robots in the room, so they won't really, really know what's gone wrong. So, I don't think I need... Actually, can we... What if we put him on the couch? Let's put him on the couch. Let's make it look like he's having a nice, nice little nap. You know? Come on, buddy. Ah, nice. At, you know, after a nice long day of walking in circles, we all need to take a second to just sit on the fucking couch. Lie down on the... You know what? That's good enough. There you go. That, that's how humans sleep. Yeah, now again, you're not a human, so who cares? You don't need to sleep like a human. Hi there. What is this room? Oh, wait, this is the room with the roll. Oh, yeah, this is the, this is the other way I could have gone if I... If I took him out, I could have gone through the normal way and just gone through the door, I think. But, uh, don't need to do that. Because we, we stealthed our way around. Now, I think one of the modifiers you can apply to this game allows you to take the knives out. Because I think you might have actually been able to do that in the original game. That was one of the, that was something they changed at some point, like with an update. But now you can make that, you can put, turn on a cheat that lets you retrieve your knives after you stab them. But I, th I think it is better that you can't retrieve your knives after you stab them, because it makes you really, really commit. Because obviously, you never have to worry about ammo if you can just infinitely throw knives and then take them back. So, this really makes you have to commit to the choice of throwing a knife at a robot to kill them. And also these, like, th they drop their guns after they die, but you can't actually pick them up and use them. Which, again, I like, because if you had the gun, you, the game immediately loses. Because part of the appeal is being able to actually throw a knife yourself at the robots, having to use your aim and quick reflex to, to get through it. Whereas if you had a gun, you could just go, boop, and shoot them instantly. And it's like, where's the fun in that? That immediately, that, that, that instantly loses so much of what the appeal of this game is. But, again... Not judging you, if that's the way you prefer to play, you prefer to play with that sheet enabled, you have more fun that way, more power to you, which is not really what I... Not the experience I, I like getting out of this game. Frequent urination does not make a business sensation. Alright, any robots that run this balcony? No, I think I'm safe. I'm safe to stand up here. I'm safe in this office. 
How many robots I got down there? I gotta do a surveillance check. Only one? I think there might be only one. Nope. You didn't see anything. You saw absolutely nothing. You need not concern yourself with any... Ooh, key card too. Okay, that's, that's a mistake I made in my first playthrough, I think. Is I kept all the key cards, which clog my inventory. You do not need to keep all the key cards. You need to keep exactly one key card, and that's it. What you just need to keep the highest level of key access key access card to access the level. So, for instance, a level two card will work on level two and all levels below it. You don't need a level one key card to access. It's not like it's not like different sections have different responsibilities. It, it is strictly a hierarchical thing where the higher your level of access, the more things in the facility you can access as opposed to category or level one access only gets to this part of the facility, level two only gets to this part of the facility. It's not that kind of thing. It, it's strictly just hierarchical in that regard. Shit! Nope. Okay. We're good. I gotta figure out what's the best... Okay, I think... I think my best course of action is to get back in there. Can I jump out the window through anywhere else, or is this my only access? Can I jump out? Okay, good. I can jump out here. Whoop. No, uh-uh. No, you don't. No, you absolutely do not. Alright, I think my best shot to get you. Don't you look at me, you little, you little twit. Stop looking at me. You're not gonna blow my cover, you hear me? His face is yellow. He's searching for me. He is searching for me. He's not gonna find me. We're... The good news is that it doesn't seem like the robots themselves ever... I mean, that guy pops in, like, pretty clearly, obviously, actually. But the, the supervisor robots, the enemies never do, which is the important part. What I need to see will always be on screen. Okay, I, th I think he's in an active patrol mode. I think I got accidentally spotted by him, or accidentally half-spotted by him too many times. So now I think we're gonna have to go... Get a little bit more aggressive with our play style. We're gonna crouch down right here. We're gonna wait for him to pass by this cubicle. And then we're gonna strike! Oh, I'm gonna miss! Got, got that one though, okay. Whew. I always miss the first one, but the second one I hit. I hit the second one. And again, I didn't need to do that. In fact, I, you know, I probably shouldn't. That, that was probably dumb. Uh, well, actually, we, we can repl we can repla replace that, because we have that whole, there was a box of knives up above in the previous section, so... In this specific context, it was fine to do that, but the smarter, because obviously we, we know we have a stash of knives over here that we can go back and get. But the smarter play there would have been to just bypass it, because again, stealth game, you can play how you want, you can skip enemies, by trying to do a passive run and just being super, super sneaky about it. Or you can go super genocide run and just kill them all. I definitely could have just jumped out the window here, waited for him to pass around that corner, and then gone through the door when he wasn't looking. That would have been the cost-efficient resource management way to do, to do this. But, uh, that's not what I actually- shit. Okay, there's more. Alright, there's one patrolling. Alright. We gotta survey the landscape. There's one. I got. I got a free kill on this on this guy right here. There's a guy that's not looking at me right here who I got a free kill on. And there's another one. Okay, hold on. What do my options look like here? I wonder if I can. Well, what does this root look like? Ooh. Okay. That's that's the strat. The strat, I think, is to kill the guy in front of me when he goes into that back room and he's not looking at me. To give myself as much of a buffer as possible between the two. Because this this time... Oh! Shit! Oh! Okay. Is that, is that me? He's coming too? No. Oh, shit. Oh, I was not expecting that. Also, I need to get you out of the way of the store in case he turns around and figures out what happened. Oh, I think it was another- could I could have gone this way? Yeah, there's also, uh... There's also another side route back here I could have taken to get around them entirely, looks like. Yeah, I could have just... I mean, this probably isn't... Because he's looking that way, so it's probably not the best idea to... 
just get past you. Because I think, from what I remember at some point, we're going to do something down there that's going to piss people off. So it's probably, it, it's it, the safer choice is just to take this guy out. Because, I mean, he's not, he's not looking at me. It should be an easy kill. I don't really have anything to worry about. Yeah, it's like, there's no reason not. I like how they just don't care, by the way. They have zero concern for all the carnage we're causing with all the robots we slaughter along the- Uh. <laughs> Did he just- Oh, that hurts! I think I just witnessed this man- Oh my god, what? What the fuck? Uh. Uh, my friend? Okay, you're fine. He's fine. He's good. And then he walks right back to the trash can. He's crying in the corner. He's so, he's so embarrassed at his display. He's gone back to crying. The what the fuck was that? Okay. Let's review. So, my man here, he walks into the trash can and it kills him. He's, he's the, the trash can was- What the fuck? What are you doing, my dude? What is wrong with you? He walks into the trash can, it clips into his knee, and it just instantly kills him. The trash is just that powerful. Then he flails around on the floor trying to get back up again for a solid minute. I, I don't think this, I think this game has some quirks to it, you know? I, I have a feeling that there might be some technical issues that they haven't quite sorted out with this game yet. Just, just this gut feeling I have. Hi. What, what are you going to do now? What crazy shit are you going to do now? Oh, and then he just got right back up again. I like how I say that he doesn't care that we're killing everyone and then he just instantly dies, like, on command. Well, whatever. If your body turned into electricity, it would light up the whole world. Now that sounds inspirational, until you realize that they're replacing all humans with robots. Then it becomes a little more grim. Anyway, okay, I think I think we're fine. Like there's obviously a lot of robots down there, but they're all, they're all facing away from me right now, so I don't think we need to worry about them. I think we're I think we're good for the time being. It's going to have a little bit of a wander around. I think I remember there being a secret like in this corner. Yeah, there's a secret room right down here. You gotta crouch down real low to get in here. Hello. Trophy? No trophy? Hmm. I think I got an achievement in the Steam version for the Vive, but no trophy. Big sad. Anyway, what was I talking about? I feel like I was in the middle of something before I got completely sidetracked by a Mr. Glitchy Glitch over there. Anyway. Hey, friends. Yeah, so as you might be able to tell, uh, our plans of getting out of here have kind of gone to shit, because the door is completely barricaded off, and no one's, no one's having a meeting here today. Meetings are canceled forever. I can definitely get through there into the, into the elevators. I just don't have the access card necessary to, wait, oh, is it in there? It sure is. Of course it is. Alright, I can very easily screw this up. Like, yeah, I feel like Indiana Jones and the law, the Idol Temple. Ugh. Steady. Oh, I remember what I wanted to say. Uh, the guy who caught me off guard at the doorway and, and actually followed me. That's the other thing about this game, is that the AI, like, they do have free scripted paths that they walk around. But if if they see you enough times, they'll go on the they'll they'll go on the offensive. There, there was a guy in the other section where we could see the, the assembly line of robots. He was he I, I accidentally got half spotted by him enough times that he went into he went he left patrol mode and went into hunting mode. He was actually like he, he his, his eye didn't change back to blue; it stayed yellow the whole time because he was actively searching for me. And then the other guy again, I got I, because my plan there was going to be wait for him to go into the back room and take out the guy who was back was facing me so I could get an easy kill without him noticing, hide the body, and then wait for him to loop around and take him out before the other one would know what happened. But then I guess I got spotted by him too many times, and then he actually chased me down as well. So that's why the other reason I love this you can't get too complacent, you can never feel too comfortable with your positioning. Even if you avoid being spotted once, that doesn't mean that you're going to get so lucky the next time. Because they, they, they're they smart enough to know when you are... Like, it's not like they, they, they don't just... They don't forget. Because one time they can chalk it up to, oh, I guess I must have seen something. But if it happens more than once, they'll be like, wait, no, I'm not... I'm not I'm not seeing things. There's definitely someone hiding out here. And then they'll take care of the problem. So, I love it. I love it. Uh, Alright, what's the number? 2330. Nope. Nope. 
Can you aim at the thing I want you to hit? So, this lockdown, huh? <laughs> okay, I admit it. I knew this would happen. I mean, you're holding a very valuable stolen prototype. Oh, don't get mad, okay? I needed you to understand how bad things were here. Look, I'll level with you. I need your help to find out what's going on. Get a level 3 access card, take the elevator, and find someone called April. Her desk is in the production department. Now, if you help me, I promise to help you escape. Pinky swear it. Alright, Winter. I mean, I don't really have much of a choice. Because, like, I am the only human left here. And everyone else has been turned into robots. And they all, every last one of them wants me dead. So... Yeah, it kind of is in my best interest to listen to you. Because, I mean, it's my, my choices are die by the robots trying to get out on my own, or hope when just telling the truth, and, you know, maybe I'll escape. And I believe that marks the end of level two. Yeah, that's the end of level two. Consignments. All right. Less, less technical issues. I mean, I, I think the frame rate stuttering thing is still consistent. I think it's just that I'm... I'm acclimating to it, so I'm not. I'm, it's not bothering me as much the more the more I play. But as far as straight up texture popping and things like that, we noticed it in small quantities here and there. But I think it, it just looked the the most. I think it looked most egregious when we were when we could look outside Transcorp and actually get a glimpse into the world outside the office. That was when it was most at its most jarring, which does have me concerned for some of the later levels in this game. Without spoiling anything, it's um. It's gonna get a little more intensive on the game's graphics, so... I'm a little concerned how that's gonna hold up, but we'll cross the bridge when we get to it. For now, we're just gonna... I think that was a nice, solid episode. We got ourselves a little bit of combat this time, explored a bit more. I got some nice, nice dose of heart attacks. Always good to have a nice dose of heart attacks when you play Budget Cuts Ultimate. But yeah, I'm excited to keep going. So far, it's holding up just as well as I remember it, if not more so, because obviously, because at a certain point when I played the game enough times, I kind of got so acclimated to the game systems that it became too easy. But since I haven't played it in a while, a lot of the a lot of the mechanics of I'm not as I'm not as in tune with a lot of it. So I like I forgot the I forgot that the robots could open doors. I forgot how smart the AI can really be with following you around doors if they spot you too many times. So it's kind of like playing it for the first time. I mean, not really, because the general layout of all the levels is still in my head. So I have, I generally know what to expect. But still, it's, it, it's the most it's felt like a, a, a new playthrough since my actual first playthrough, which is cool. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. And I'll be catch you all tomorrow for some more Budget Cuts Ultimate. Goodbye.